On December the 9th, 2022, something happened that would change the way APIs were written in Go for thousands of developers. On that day, the Gorilla Mux package, along with the entire Gorilla Toolkit, was archived. No more commits or updates would be made. If you're unaware, Gorilla Mux is one of the most popular Go packages for handling API routing. The reason it's so popular is because it hooks into the HTTP handler interface of the standard library, which is considered a very good thing by Go developers. On top of that, it provides a lot of necessary functionality for routing HTTP requests that are difficult to achieve with the standard library alone. If you've ever tried to use HTTP serve Mux, then you know what I mean. Some of the features that Gorilla Mux provides are path-based routing and parameters with regex support for both. Routing based on HTTP properties such as HTTP methods or HTTP headers and middleware, either through custom functions or through the middleware package provided by the toolkit. As for the users of Mux, well, looking at the stats on GitHub, it's used by over 100,000 public repositories and likely many more private ones. So what happened? Well, according to the maintainers, they no longer had the capacity to continue maintaining the code base. And despite asking for volunteers to take over the project, no one did. Therefore, the project was archived to read-only mode, with no further updates being made. Well, what next? Whilst there's no urgency to do so now, it's probably a good idea to think about migrating away from Gorilla Mux in the near future. I'm going to look at three other options for HTTP routing in Go, and what I believe this means for the language in the long term. Jin is a web framework that is written in Go. It claims up to 40 times performance when compared to the standard library due to its custom HTTP router. Jin has support for many features such as middleware, path parameters, and open telemetry out of the box, but unfortunately does not support regex-based routing when compared to Gorilla Mux. Routes are created in Jin by using the method function and setting the path followed by the handler function. This differs from Gorilla Mux as the method is used as part of the routing by default, but follows with more traditional frameworks such as Express. Jin uses its own custom handler type, which makes use of a Jin.context instead of the HTTP handler interface of the standard library. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this, but it does enable a number of helpful methods, such as simplified JSON encoding, validation, and other functions that one may need for HTTP handling. If you are migrating from a Gorilla Mux project, you can use Jin with your existing HTTP handlers. To do so, you can use the wrapf or wraph methods to wrap an HTTP function or handler, respectively. This won't work for any requests that make use of the mux vars function, but it should soften the blow of a full migration. Overall, Jin is a worthy contender, and whilst it doesn't conform to the HTTP handler interface, it makes up for this by providing a lot of functionality and performance. Echo is another web framework that is very comparable to Jin. Just like Jin, Echo provides support for path parameters, middleware, and open telemetry, whilst also lacking support for regex. Echo uses a similar interface as Jin for defining routes, in which the method function is used followed by the path and the handler function. In Echo, the handler function provides an echo.context, which, similar to Jin, can be used to read data from the request and send a response back to the client. The main difference when compared to Jin, however, is that an error also has to be returned in this handler function. By default, when an error is returned, the server will return HTTP status 500 to the client. If you're looking to migrate from Mux to Echo, the framework also provides a wrapper function to wrap the standard HTTP handler in an Echo handler. This too suffers the same problem when it comes to migrating the Mux.fars function. Overall, Echo is a nice alternative to Jin, however, it has a smaller community and does not boast as much performance. Ultimately, when choosing between the two, it'll come down to personal preference. If you're like me and really want to keep with the HTTP handler interface provided by the standard library, then Qi is a compelling option. With Qi, you create a router type that can then be used with your HTTP handlers, which makes migration very easy to do. When it comes to path parameters, one can replace any instances of the muxfars function call with the Qi URL param instead, which will perform the same operation. As well as standard routing, Qi also provides some useful middleware functions. This is the recommended base middleware stack, which provides access to a request ID, the real IP of the client using the x forward for header, a logger, and a recoverer in case of panics. One thing to consider, however, is that Qi does not support open telemetry out of the box. Fortunately, we can use another package, Otel Qi, to achieve this. Overall, Qi is worthy of consideration in my opinion, despite having a smaller community and a less active code base. Ultimately, I think it's a huge shame to lose not only the Gorilla Mux package, but also the entire Gorilla Toolkit. 
which held a number of valuable packages for maintaining services, such as WebSockets, Middleware, JSON RPC, and many others. Whilst I think this is going to only amount to a moderate headache for Go developers, it does raise greater concerns about dependencies, especially within the Go ecosystem. Gorilla failing to find maintainers is something I wouldn't have expected, especially given the amount of people and companies using Go and the package itself. Ultimately, I would love to see some better routing capabilities added to the standard library of Go. HTTP serve Mux does exist, but it's woefully lacking compared to what Gorilla Mux offered. When it comes to the replacements, I will personally consider using Qi in the future. I'm interested to hear about the other replacements that I haven't talked about, and what any of you watching will be using personally. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.